Hello. I thought we might do a recording today just to show you how I go about going flying with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I happen to actually use Microsoft Flight Simulator, which you can see here, where the, the launch screen where I've got the TBM ready, but I haven't put any kind of flight details in yet. We can see the United Kingdom there underneath the clouds. I also use Little Nav Map to plan my flights and I use Volanta to record that I have done the flights. So Volanta is an electronic logbook, essentially. Uh, or electronic flight logbook, I guess. So first thing we'll do is go and look in Little Nav Map. Now, I've already loaded the performance file for the TBM 930. And we can just check very quickly. Yes, I am using the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 scenery library. And we can check the connection as well. I'm using the FSX Prepare 3D or MSFS connection. Obviously, the simulator isn't running yet, so an airplane hasn't appeared on the map. But if we go and zoom in, we'll do a little flight from Booker Airfield, which is over here. So I'll right click on Booker and I'll say set that airport as the departure. And it appears in the flight plan. And we'll fly to, where should we go? Somewhere I haven't been for a flight just yet. Blackbush, that's a good example. EGLK. So if we zoom in and have a look at Blackbush, yeah, it's got quite a long runway. A lot of parking, so right click, set the airport as the destination. Okay. Interesting, there's no waypoints around, so it makes it a bit boring in terms of actually programming a flight in. Let's have a look around. So if we were taking off from Booker, ideally we want to fly out to a waypoint. So Bensu, for example, add waypoint Bensu to flight plan. And we're just I'm just looking along the line of the runway to see if there are any waypoints. There's one over here. So I guess we could use that just for a an easy waypoint to see. So we'll right click and we'll add that waypoint to the flight plan. Okay. So there's our flight plan. Very, very simple flight plan, but it's just for an example for today really. And notice we're going to keep out of the way of Heathrow, which is good. Um, if you wanted to, you could actually go and look at section charts. So yeah, this avoids the Heathrow airspace, which is great. Okay, so there's our flight plan. EGTB, Bensu, Big29, EGLK. So let's go and start Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going from EGTB. And we're not going to actually bother putting any... Well, I suppose we could put the flight plan in, but I'm more interested in programming the airplane. So we'll set the airplane up so it's on parking. That means the engine won't be running when we start it. If we start on a runway, the engine will already be running. So, and then we'll say fly. So that's going to load the simulator. While we're waiting for that, we can come back in here and we can go to the flight plan menu in little nav map and we can copy it to the clipboard copy the flight plan route description to the clipboard what that actually gives you if i just quickly run notepad and paste it it gives you a standard format flight plan that any any piece of software should understand if it can absorb a flight plan from somewhere else so what we should be able to do in volanta is now give ourselves a call sign so g uh what are we flying the tbm TBM9. I'll just make up a flight call sign on the fly. I haven't got a flight number. We're going from Wickham Air Park and we were going, where were we going to? EGLK. EGLK. So that's where we're going to. And we can put in our flight plan now. So we can actually, we can either import a file if we had saved a PLN file, for example, or we can paste the route. So we can paste into here the the flight plan that we copied into the clipboard from little nav map and we can save the route and now if we go and zoom in and look down here you will see that route is now on the map and so is our airplane because flight simulator has loaded in the background while we were doing this 
Okay, and we should be able to see ourselves as well in this nav map. Okay, so that is our last involvement until we look back at the end with Volanta. It's just going to record that we were flying. Okay, so let's go and look in Little Na uh, sorry, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we press Control E to cheat at starting the airplane up. Okay. And it will start itself up. And the engine will start spooling up any moment. And we can warm up this system here as well. We get lots of warnings. So there's a few things we have to do inside. We turn on the autopilot. We turn the fuel selection to automatic. Ignition is on. That's all get, That's all doing it on. When you press control here, it does a whole sequence of things for you. So external lights. We want the nav lights and the strobe lights on. Uh, we also want down here to turn on the pit top heat. We want that on. We also want to... Now, if you're on a loose runway, for example, you can turn the inertial separator on. What that is is a piece of hardware inside the air intake next to the engine that stops rubbish from going into the engine basically we can remove the yoke so we can see what we're doing it's not very cold in the uk today so i don't need the anti-icing but i might want that off so we can see this display down here so there are three main displays in the tbm there's the pilot's uh, display then there's this MFD display so if you go into flight plan you can program in your flight plan so add origin E G T B and it's found booker and we can enter it so then where were we going to let's go and have a look E G L K so add a destination E G L K and it's found Blackbush enter now we can put in between those waypoints, we can put an en route waypoint. So we're going to put in Bensu, B E N S U, and enter. So it's done that look. So and we can scroll if we use the the up and down arrows here. We can scroll along. So if we had lots of waypoints, the idea being you can put another en route waypoint in between that one and the destination, for example. So the next waypoint we wanted was Big 29. B I G and go to the numbers 29 and enter. Okay. Oh, it's, it's given us two of them. One of them is 15 nautical miles away with that bearing from us. So that's going to be the one, isn't it? And if we go and look up here now, we can see the map as light lit up with our plan that we've just chosen. Now you'll see while we're on the MFD screen here, we also get a this turns the knob on the on the controls here into range for the map, so we can zoom out and check our route, and that's perfect. Look, so it's it's kind of superimposed. Oh, we can't scroll this around. It superimposed the corners onto it as well that we might follow. Okay, some of the other things that, we're, that are nice to look at here, so if we go to PFD for example, we can say the nav source. So you'll notice over here, if you watch this when I change it, nav2, GPS, nav1, nav2, GPS again. So at the moment it's using GPS. So if you w did want to go and tune in the radios to use beacons along the way, you can go into MFD. Sorry. Where am I? <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm becoming lost in the systems myself now. Oh, we go Navcom, I'm being blind. If you go to Navcom and go audio and radios, you can tune in the nav radios here. So you just go and click on one and you can tune a, a frequency in for it. So if I was flying this just like a GA flight, I might want to go 122. Point eight. Okay, that's not accepted. That one, two. Oh, this is the nav radio, not the com radio. What am I talking about? Okay, let's go back. 
So I might want to set up the COM radio with 122.800, for example, and press enter. And that would get Unicom. Yeah, and then I can transfer that to make it the active frequency, for example. But we're not going to use radios, we're just interested in doing this flight. So we're going to go to Bensu, then Big 29, then EGLK. Okay, and that van has parked in a wonderful place. So I'm just going to ignore it. I don't know if you've noticed this, but you can't actually cr crash into the automatic vehicles that appear on the map. So we're going to re remove the parking brakes and we're going to start our flight. So we'll just spin round and try and avoid everybody. We're going to go right through the middle of that plane, so I'll just I'll be courteous and go around him. Or her. I don't think there was anybody in it actually, so it isn't it, I suppose. Do planes have a gender? I think ships are referred to as female, aren't they? So let's straighten the view up. We can press space to sit up in the cockpit. And we're going to taxi out to the runway at Wickham. Slow down a little bit, we're not going to make the corner. Okay. So we accelerate down the wrong way. We go flaps to one. And rotate gently. And we're up. So gear up. Flaps up and cut the throttle back so we don't overstress. You'll notice the, the torque over here is flashing red, so I'm going to cut that back a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to trim the nose slightly so we climb in a fairly straight line. So then I can concentrate on looking at the autopilot controls. So we're going to go to heading mode, and we're going to press that so it goes the direction we're going so you can see the pipper and we've started to roll though because I've not got the autopilot on yet and I wasn't looking and you can press the autopilot button to switch on so it's going to follow the heading now it's in heading mode so it's going to come back towards the heading and we'll go for an altitude and we can roll this number to say we actually want say 3000 feet and we can say the vertical speed to get there and we can roll the vertical speed and say get there at a thousand feet a minute. We can also go instead of heading mode say go to nav mode and it will follow the flight plan now. Yeah so the plane is automatically banking and it's going to rejoin the flight plan. We don't actually need 3000 feet let's go for 2500. Let's cut the engine back to 50% we're going very fast. Okay, so it's a very, very short flight. Along the way, we'll reduce altitude back to 1500 feet. So, all we have to do to do that is say we want to go to 1500 feet, please, and we want the vertical speed to get there to be 500 feet, for example, a minute. Okay, so we're flying along quite happily. If we go and have a look at Little Nav Map, we will see there's our aeroplane with the track behind it. We're coming down here and following the plan. If we look in Volanta, it, it's delayed, it only updates every few seconds, but it's doing exactly the same trick. I'll show you Volanta once we've landed to give you some idea of why it's kind of useful. So you can see here we've got 
crosswind by the look of it. Let's have a look at this on our map. Yeah, look, 22 knots crosswind. The wind is going this way across us, which is why we're aiming into it, which is why the plane is tipping around and banking to try and counter the crosswind. Obviously, it's quite variable. So we've got the autopilot on. We're in nav mode. We're doing vertical speed mode to come down to 1,500 feet at 500 feet a minute. And in terms of our GPS plan, you can see we're between Bensu and Big 29. Distance 8.4 miles to go. Yeah, so the TBM on this, the, the navigation systems on it is very good. It gives you lots and lots of information. You get your outside air temperature, inside temperature, the true air speed, ground speed. It's very, very good. current com frequency that you're tuned into, the autopilot mode that it's operating in. I've just pressed B on the keyboard, I'd forgotten to do that when we took off, it's a shortcut in Microsoft Flight Simulator where it um, sets the barometric pressure accurately for you so you don't have to go and look it up. One of my bugbears with the TBM is the barometric pressure is in inches, not in hectopascals. And if you go and look on any of the charts, like on uh, Little Navmap, for example, if we were to go and look at the information for Blackbush and go and look at the weather, it's going to give you Q1009, that's the um, QNH. So that's a different scale than inches. So you have to go and convert it. So I'm going to cut the speed back now because we're getting, we're 1500 foot, we're about to make the turn into EGLK. It's saying landing gear because I cut the engine right back and it's just um, the TBM expects if you've cut the engine back. So I'm going to take it off autopilot, it expects if you cut the engine back that you're going to land and I hadn't put the gear down. So let's do this right turn. So you can see the airfield over there. We're still at 1500 feet. I'm going to start dropping down to 1000 feet. So again, it's just flying in normally now, really. Nothing special about this. So we need to get the airspeed down a little bit because we are not supposed to put the flaps down until we're in the white area on the ribbon. Otherwise we overstress the flaps. I'm not sure it really simulates it very well in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I'm not going to test it. So down to the right speed, so gear down, flaps down, so let's centre our view up, I think in the TBM you don't want to get much slower than 100 knots. It's quite a big heavy aeroplane. So this airfield doesn't have ILS so it's just visual landing. So you're just looking for the orientation of the runway. I'm a little bit low. But we should be fine. OK, 
Okay, coming in. Is it drifting sideways? That's going to be quite disastrous. And we're down. So I've used a little bit of reverse pitch on the propeller to slow us down quickly. And we're going to go into the dirt because the turning circle on this isn't wonderful, but oh well. So the real interest here is when we go back and look at Volanta to see what it's recorded. So I'm going to break all the rules and stop on the runway. And we're going to go down here and turn on the parking brake. That's interesting, isn't it? It says it's given us a warning and we've got the parking brake on. OK, so let's go and have a look. I'll turn that off, otherwise it's going to annoy the heck out of us. Let's go and look in Volanta and see what it did. So if we just tab across to it, we'll end the flight. And we can review our flight now. So there's the flight that we did. And if we hover over, it says we landed at 153 feet per minute. 88 knots. So if we go and have a look over here, we can have, see much more information about our flight. So how many passengers we had, the fuel burn, the distance, the landing rate, the landing g-force, the landing speed. Yeah, it gives you quite a lot of information. And you can add notes to the flight if you want. Now, where it gets interesting is we can <laughs> we can look at all the flights I've done. So obviously we've just done that little one from High Wycombe to Blackbush. If we zoom out, I've done all sorts of flights. And this is where it comes into its own, where if you're doing fl flights with a virtual airline like uh, Fly UK or My Air or something like that, then you can get a picture of all the flights you've done over time. So you can see I've done a couple of transatlantic flights, or three, like there's two to San Francisco, one to New York. Um, flying out to Hawaii and back. I think if we go down to the... Yeah, there's a couple down there in South Africa. Flown all the way around the coast of Australia, across Australia. I've done a tour of New Zealand. I think I've done a tour. Yes, you can see the tour there of Tasmania as well. So, yeah, it's quite nice looking back to see what flights you have done. You can also go into aircraft. Now, this is really um, plays on you having used common names for the aircraft. Yeah, so you can see where I put a common name in and I put a G TBM9 for example you can get an idea of which aircraft you've used the most so if there's the G TBM9 for example and I can see stats about my use of the aircraft and which airfields I've visited with it you can actually go and look at the flights themselves so you can go and look at a past flight for example and there's one there that I recorded and you can see along the way and what your landing rate was and things like that Always a nice smooth landing. Look, 75 feet per minute. But anyway, that's Volanta. Um, they also have lots of challenges in Volanta as well that you can go and do. And you can win awards that go in against your account. But I haven't bothered with any of that. Um, so there you go. A flight using Microsoft Flight Simulator. Recording or planning the flight with um, this one nav map. Programming the flight plan into the TBM's navigation system and using Volanta to record that we did the flight so we can look back on the flights we've done in the future. There you go, I'm going to stop the video there.